Last October, Huawei announced its 2020 flagship smartphones, the Mate 40 series. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Huawei Mate 40 series. Mate 40, Mate 40 Pro. It came only a month after the latest round of UN sanctions took effect. Over the course of three years, Washington wrote out multiple rounds of attacks Huawei, against the Chinese tech behemoth. Huawei is uh, a company we may not do business with at all. First, Huawei phones were removed from U.S. retailer shelves. Google looking to hang up on Then it's cut Huawei's Huawei off from Google's Android. Android. And the latest, it severed Huawei's global supply chain of microchips. So what has been a real damage to Huawei? Well, today we're here to find out. Though Huawei has been cut off from Android since May 2019 and to this day, most if not all the Huawei phones are still running Android. I know you're wondering, how is that possible? To answer this question, we need to first acknowledge that Android wasn't created by Google in the first place. And since Google acquired Android in 2005, there have always been two variants of Android, the Google version and the free open source version. The Google version has been locking Android into Google services ever since. Google services aren't just Google apps, but entire infrastructure within the system. Without it, you would not be able to run a lot of everyday and essential apps properly. This is known as Google Mobile Services, or GMS, the heart of Google's Android for users around the world. But you say Chinese mainland users haven't had access to any Google products for years. Well, this only means that all Android phones sold on the Chinese market, from Xiaomi and Huawei to OnePlus and even Samsung, either have GMS disabled by default or don't have it at all. And even though Google's Android dominates the markets, the open source and Google free version of Android has always been available for developers. Manufacturers can take that Android version and add their own touches. That's how we have Xiaomi's MIUI, OnePlus's Oxygen OS, and Huawei's EMUI. Google barring the company from fast forward to May 2019, Google was forced to cut Huawei off from its future Android updates. Here we're once again talking about the GMS version. No problem at all for Chinese mainland users. But let's not forget, Huawei also has an enormous market outside of the Chinese mainland. And for those users and potential buyers, it could become a deal breaker. But Huawei is this gigantic tech company. It won't just take that hit lying down. So what did Huawei do? It brought out HMS, or Huawei Mobile Services. HMS is not new. It has been the core of EMUI for years. But the US sanctions have given it a kind of rebirth. HMS aims to provide mobile apps with an infrastructure similar to GMS, as well as to enable third-party developers to create their own apps. HMS is like Huawei's parallel universe of the mainstream Android ecosystem. Wait a second, but what about Harmony OS? You know, the operating system that Huawei dedicated an entire event to back in September. Wasn't that like Huawei's response to Google's Android ban? Well, not exactly. Huawei's Harmony OS is the whole different type of operating system that the company built from scratch. On the one hand, you have Android, a monolithic system developed from Linux. And on the other, you have Harmony OS, a microkernel distributed system, meaning it would not require its hosting hardware to be as powerful as a smartphone. Harmony is designed to run on virtually any electronic device, from dishwashers to vacuum cleaners. Now that a date has been set for the debut of the Harmony OS 2.0, there's a lot to expect on June 2nd. But if you're hoping for a drastic shift from the Android user experience, you're out of luck. People who have tested the OS say, well, it almost fully supports Android's apps. The user interface is very much like that of Android, only faster and less energy consuming. And that's exactly what Huawei's been trying to achieve through Harmony a seamless transition from what its competitor offers, so that it may gradually chip away Android's market share. Now, Huawei has set an ambitious goal, 300 million devices running Harmony by the end of this year, including 100 million non-Huawei devices. In order for an operating system to thrive, performance is often not the priority, but the entire ecosystem behind it. 
Many brands, including BlackBerry, Microsoft, and Samsung, have failed miserably. And for Huawei, it could prove to be a bumpy ride.